Hi. Hey, 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 what's up? You guys in? Yeah. Yeah, we're in. We're in. I finally did it. I apologize. I just knocked Techie and drove Tracy crazy, but I finally got in. All right. Well, we're all here. Perfect. I think. Um, I'm gonna, what's gonna happen is throughout the call, we're just gonna have people coming in and I'll just admit them as they come in, it's fine. Okie so, dokie. So what I'll do is I'll start out again. My name's Tracy Milgram Posner. I'm the founder of BRCA Strong. I wanna thank everybody coming on the call today. I know we had two special guests come on for Vince. Cindy, thank you so much for getting this all together. We are grateful. You're Richard, welcome. Uh, thank you, um, Richard, for coming on. And Ken, we're super grateful and appreciate your time and look forward to hearing <clears throat> from Vince and Janet. And I'm going to pass it over to Cindy just a little bit so she can go ahead and share a little bit about her and who she is and what she's part of. Oh, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for your time, Vince and Janet and Dick and, and Ken and everybody else on. Uh, Tracy is very close to me uh, with her Braca Strong, but what we're doing today is a little bit different. Tracy, because of the COVID virus, we're trying to, to get people to come on and uh, share their ins inspirational stories. And I know Vince has a very inspirational story as his uh, uh, invincible story is actually amazing, uh, along with his film. And also he is a, a survivor. So what I'd like to do is, is uh, is uh, Dick on, Mr. Uh, Mr. Is, hi, how are you? Okay, hi. I wanted to hi. I wanted to surprise you, Vince, that we I was able to get a hold of your former coach, uh, so he can say hello. A little bit of a reunion uh, during this time uh, that is uh, very uh, frustrating for everybody. Uh, we have also a lot of fans on uh, of yours, Vince. We have Diane Bider uh, from New York City. And uh, her daughter, Jamie, and boyfriend, uh, Andrew, is a very big fan of yours as well. Uh, and his, your story, Vince and Janet, has inspired them as well. Um, and Ken Dunnick, I know Ken is on somewhere uh, listening. Did, did Ken get a chance to sign in? I'm here, Cindy. Hi. Oh, thank you so much, Ken, for coming on. I appreciate your time. I know everybody's really busy, uh, but I wanted to really bring on those two so that a little reunion for Vince, so Vince can say hello to them as well. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it over to Vince uh, and to also both Ken and Dick, so they both can kind of chat, reminisce, and kind of share their stories and journeys of of uh, collaborating and being along with Vince's journey. All right, thanks, Cindy, and thanks everybody out there. And of course, I'd like to introduce you to my my coach and my best friend and my wife for <laughs> six years, uh, Janet, and um, and of course uh, everybody out there. And Cindy, my cuz, what's up, cuz? And <laughs> you know, I, I guess uh, well, first of all, you know, and then with Dick and Ken, we had a chance to chat up a little bit, but this has been great. And I think Ken, you'll agree that if if, if you take a look at a triangle, the apex of that triangle is Coach Ramil. Uh, because we were both chasing our dream, and I got to know Ken, of course, uh, when he was coming out. He has a great story. They should make a movie about his uh, college <laughs> yeah. and up in the NFL. And, um, and and me, you know, there I am. I'm, I, I wind up in the uh, in the NFL. I, I don't even I don't even know what I was back then. But you know, the guy that made Invincible Vincible uh, is Coach Ramil. And uh, you know, I was just chasing the dream in '76. And, got the opportunity of a lifetime. And Coach has a great a great saying that I know he'll like to be proud that I remember it is an opportunity is worth to a person exactly what the preparation that they can make. So Ken and me and Janet as a as a world class gymnast, you know, we we uh, we we chased our dreams and got to the pinnacle basically of our sports. And you know, for me, uh, never would have happened if it weren't for the opportunity to give me Coach Ramil. So he he knows and he knows how much I love him and care for him, and uh, I, I, everything that has happened to us in, in these last few years has all resulted in that opportunity. Again, just to watch you and to say I'm an alum and I'm, I'm a fraternity member with you, and the great things that Ken does with Jersey Man and Philly Man. We should have you down here in Florida, man, Jupiter, man. And, um, but you, know, you do some great things, Ken, for, for everybody out there at charity, and you know, the father of triplets, I mean, that's a joy unto itself. 
So, all good. So thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all being on here. This is really cool. Hey, Vince, I'll, I'll jump in before Coach, and I'll just say, uh, you know, I've, I've known you for uh, for 40 years now. The 40th anniversary of the 1980 NFC Championship team was the year that the Coach Vermeil gave me an opportunity, and I was a college basketball player, never played high school football, uh, walked on my senior year and wound up making the, the Philadelphia Eagles the year they go to the Super Bowl. So it, it, it's, it, was a, it was a blessing for me to – even have, you know, a guy like Coach Vermeil know my name. And here uh, he, he puts me on the team, and and I get a Super Bowl ring, and I wind up uh, winning a couple other USFL championships in uh, in six seasons. So I'm I'm blessed in my life. Coach Vermeil is uh, one of the uh, biggest influences and uh, one of the beautiful four. But, you know, even you, Vince, we, we didn't play on the same team, but the fraternity – that Dick Vermeil has orchestrated with the Eagles that played in that era, specifically you and I and guys like Jaworski and John Bunning and some others. Uh, we've maintained a family relationship for 40 years now, uh, plus even guys that uh, were there long before I. And and it's really all due to Coach Vermeil. So uh, I'm pleased to be on the call and uh, contribute whatever I can. And uh, I'll, I'll hand it over to Coach and see what he has to say. <laughs> well, the real coach gets way too much credit. You know, I, I signed a lot of free agents that didn't make it. Okay. <laughs> there was some talent there. There's a, or a, there's some talent there, you know, and, you know, I came into the national football thinking of myself as a free agent, you know, came out of high school coaching, junior college and college. So I always had a real compassion for the kid that was coming in the league the same way. You know, I was very fortunate in getting Vince and, hey, Kenny, there were other free agents on that team too, but I can give you names like Kurt Warner and London Fletcher that, you know, unrestricted free agents. I mean, free agent, period, like you. And hell, Kurt now is in the Hall of Fame. So, yeah. Yeah. but we've given a lot of kids over the years, my staff and I, opportunities, but they either didn't have the persistence and discipline or self-discipline to make it, or the athletic talent, but many times they just didn't have the grit that I was looking for in a player to, to add to our roster when they weren't all of, already supposed to be really fine players. And uh, I had a lot of luck with kids with a lot of grit, believe me. They just had a lot of guts and worked their butts off and, and improved their talents a little bit every day they came up, out and all of a sudden they're playing, playing in the league, earning a living. Some, yeah. some, some last too long, but some still had a gr real positive experience out of it. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Um, before we continue, uh, we have some other coaches on uh, listening uh, to us. We have also, I believe, a coach, uh, Jeff Caparelli. Jeff, are you there? Is Jeff there? No, no, Jeff? Hold on one sec. I think he's muted. Does he have a beard? Yes, he yeah, has I'm a here. beard. Oh, yeah, hi, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. how are you? Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here, Jeff. Uh, I wanted you to know that uh, uh, we have uh, really great people on. And before we get into sharing more of the stories, um, you know, I want to actually give a shout out again to Tracy from Braca Strong, who actually her organization uh, helps breast cancer survivors, thrivers, and previvors. Uh, Tracy is a previvor. I am a breast cancer survivor. She has done amazing things. I will come back to that so we can share more on that. I'll let Tracy share her story, uh, which is very inspirational. Uh, again, we're doing this today. Uh, we're actually curving it a little bit. Usually we have all breast cancer survivors on and we talk about, you know, uh, dealing with chemotherapy and radiation at a time during this pandemic. Uh, a lot of people are going through difficult times, not able to get their medications. We have, in fact, one, one, uh, one young lady that Tracy helped out. Uh, she actually literally went to the pharmacist that she knew, got the medication, and drove it all the way to her home in Homestead, which to me is, 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 is commendable. And uh, her compassion to helping others is amazing. Uh, so I want to, of course, always give a shout out to my Tracy. Um, but Jeff, I want you to share, you coach with my husband. My husband, John Hammontree, is a coach. He's been a coach for, gosh, 40 years now, and you both have, both have coached together. And Vince's story is very inspirational, and we saw the movie, and uh, John and I loved it. And, uh, but I want you to talk a little bit about, Jeff, uh, 
you, what you do uh, on the field and how Vince has inspired you as well? Well, first of all, Coach Hammetry um, was a coach at Christopher Columbus High School in my sophomore and freshman years. So I played under him and then went and played college football in New Mexico and then started coaching at the private school level and then to the public school level. Uh, I, never I never anticipated being a teacher, but I believe the greatest teachers are the coaches because the coaches lead by demonstration. Um, and it's been an awesome experience to be with John Hammetry over the years. We still work together now at Sunset Senior High School. My retirement is coming up in June. He has retired, semi-retired, and then came back. But he has been an uh, inspiration to me in terms of coaching and as a mentor personally. It's, it's been a great opportunity for me to know him. You're blessed to have him as a husband. Thank you. And I'm blessed to know you. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the background saying he's blessed to know yeah, you. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you, Coach Jeff. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it's real cool. Thank you for having I'll me. Coach Ramil, you, thank you. What you just said is so true because one of the men aside from Coach Ramil that had a great impact on my life is uh, my high school coach, George Corner. And I played one year of high school football. And uh, Coach Corner uh, gave me this great quote when I was trying out, happy of those who dream dreams or willing to pay the price to make the dreams come true. It's a great Vermilism, too. But, uh, you, know, you know, and if the willingness is to pay the price. And I, I'd like to, if I can, and not be remiss, uh, also I'm sitting right next to my to a coach. I was messing that she's my coach, which she is in so many ways. But uh, Janet, my coach at the, the collegiate level um, for the University of Pennsylvania Gymnastics, and she also, uh, she has some strong points about that. So, Janet, I'm going to figure out my, I'm going to just have uh, you say a couple of minutes to the group. I don't want to, I don't, this isn't about me. What, what do you want me to say? <laughs> Janet, Janet, share, share with us how you met Vince. Because, you know, in the movie, you know, they, the movie's mostly true, but there are a little bit of curves on how you both really met. Um, well, I was a coach at the University of Pennsylvania, and I had a friend of mine, um, and I was also a realtor, and he had asked me to be on a board, and it was for children. And it was about having having everyone have the same opportunities in the same playing field. And he had a, a, a number of daycares. And so he wanted people to, um, he wanted children to be able to have art, music, photography, fitness, all in one and not have a parent pay. Because in a lot of daycares, the parents would pay to have their child do a gymnastic class or a music class or, you know, whatever it was. And they would be pulled out of their class out of daycare. And this gentleman um, wanted everyone to have the same opportunity to have a curriculum set up. So we had a think tank. And I was in the think tank and I met Vince. And of course, I didn't like him at first. I really didn't really <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, we didn't like each other. Well, I didn't like, well, I don't know. But anyhow, <laughs> in the end, we got together. But it took about six months. We never, you know, we didn't see each other again. And my friend was like, he's a nice guy. Give him a chance. Go on. That's so funny. Yeah. So that's how we met. And, you know, it was all about helping people and giving back and trying to make everybody have the same opportunities. That was exactly. 93. So then we got yeah. married actually right after the Barcelona games. We yeah. started dating and as they say, the rest is history and we're, we're so happy oh. to be to have our daughter Gabriella. She's oh. down here with us in Jupiter. She works with the Sixers and mm -hmm. he's here and, and then Vinny and uh, he's been training down here to take his NFL dream. So yeah, all, all good. But, and Vinny's doing well too, right? As a yeah, football player? Okay. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, we're, we're real excited. And, um, you know, we've got some good news. And, you know, hopefully uh, things are going to open up a little bit. It looks, you know, it looks like it's going to be restricted in terms of how, um, how things are going to go, which we understand. But, you know, the thing is, is uh, you know, there's that expression, I don't care if you call me, just call me. And, um, you know, the way we're, Vinny and I were in jet, we were talking as a family because we were listening to the uh, new guidelines set up. 
and uh, we were talking through it, and you know, he said, "Would you mind if nobody was in the stands?" <laughs> I don't care. I just want to have NFL somewhere in there, or CFL, whatever it might be. But yeah, you know, it's like anybody. You chase a dream, and you, you, you know, you got to work hard. And when that opportunity comes, you got to be ready for it. Ken knows that. I know Coach knows that. Coach Jeff, Janet knows that. I know that. And you as well. All the survivors as well. You know, you got to. Be- Hey, hey, Vince, what, what everybody doesn't know is I did uh, CAA football for Fox Sports, and the game that Vinny had, I, I believe it was against Towson his senior yeah. year, all you got to do is send that film to any pro scout or evaluator, and he's going to get a shot because he really had a tremendous game that day. And I think it's all about being in the right place at the right time. He certainly has the talent in the world to do it, and if he keeps going, he'll find a spot. That's one. He certainly persisted. Hey, Coach Jeff, let me say hello to Coach Jeff there, high school coach. Yes, sir. Coach, uh, and Vince knows this too, I wouldn't have ever have gone to college or been a football coach or high school teacher or anything if it hadn't been for my high school football coach. So I, I, I really believe with what you're saying, many times those guys are many times for young, young kids, those are the people that touch you and send you in the right direction. I had no plans to go to college. I was going to stay home. My dad was going to build a new garage. It was good for meal and son's garage. And I was going to learn to drive his sprint race cars. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be Tony Benton, Housen Johnny, Freddie Agabation, all those, all you want ready later. Okay. And, uh, it, but my high school football coach told me I could play high school football if I want. I mean, college football if I wanted to. No one had told me that. Hell, we only had 129 kids in high school, the whole school. So it was really, you know, small, almost not football. But anyway, wow. he's the guy that got me started. And it hadn't been for him. He created the he he created the, the confidence that I could play. He he created the compassion and passion for the game and the people that play it. It all started with him. And wow. Uh, God, I shared his life until he passed away. Uh, after Super Bowl, even he got to coach you. So I, Vince knows the story with his high school coach Kenny. I'm sure you won. In fact, because of those guys, when I was coaching, I always, especially at Kansas City, when I matured a little bit more as a coach, I, I would in, invite the kids if we're in your town, yeah, we're playing your city. You got a high school coach, invite him over. And in a number of times it happened. <laughs> and Jeff, I would give. I they'd come in the Saturday pregame. I say, listen, I, I normally have a 20-minute meeting with my team. It's yours today. <laughs> it's, <laughs> my God, this is pro football. No, there's still young men that need to listen to a leader. And uh, I did that many times. And I learned every time I did it from a great high school football coach. That's awesome. And, you know, you mentioned some uh, – I think Ken mentioned earlier in the conversation the legacy of the family that that has become part of your legacy. I coached high school football in 76 at a private high school that was a losing program. And to this day, boys on that team come and get me once every two or three weeks. They take me to dinner. They talk about life. They talk about how the yeah. discipline required to play football was what motivated them. And, and, and I think that that discipline, whether it's in the arena of football or in the arena of survival, that discipline, that want to win, to beat whatever the, the, the issue is, I think it's, it's really, really a great thing. Um, well, Jeff, you know, I, Jeff, interjecting, it might be the only place left in our society where we teach people to work. You know, it's not a form of punishment. <laughs> there's, there's absolutely no correlation between working less and getting better. A lot of people have tried it. They normally get cut. The exactly. First week. Okay. Exactly. But, uh, so, you know what? Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. And thank everybody for, for being here today and sharing. Uh, 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 every, awesome. every, every sentence is an ism, Coach. Uh, just, and also, just, and I'll, I'll, I'll just get out after this. The reason I wound up coaching and teaching in Interboro High School, my alma mater, <clears throat> was because of my coaches and those teachers that I had that had such a tremendous influence in my life as growing up. I never got beyond the eighth grade. Um, and my mother was suffering from uh, anxiety and depression. Um, it was my, my whole identity was athletics. And it was those coaches and teachers, my dad having to work all the time and coaching you that growing up, you know, and, and so, you know, those coaches and teachers that had such a tremendous impact 
that's why when I graduated from college, I went back to my alma mater and taught the coach for six years and, and started chasing the dream. And thank God you came into my life. Vince, you know, Vince, is a, uh, Vince is a great example of what a great example can do. You know, he's inspired people through his example. You know, you can give people advice and direct them up, but they forget your advice after a while. But you show them a good example on a consistent basis, and they never forget it. It becomes part of your memory system, uh, your throwback system when you go back and think about things that influenced you positively. It's usually a good example, not a not good advice. Uh, Tracy, Tracy, are you there? Yes. Okay. You know, I have a couple questions just to throw out there. If anybody wants to jump on and answer, we'd appreciate it. You know, Vince, we do have a couple questions for you. I know in reviewing all the information that you sent me, you know, I know you and your wife had sent a quote to me that really caught my eye. And I know from Cindy and from reading information about you, you know, you did have cancer. And I said, you, know, you encouraged me to get tested, you know. What brought that? Were you having symptoms? Were you not feeling well? Or did Janet just have this feeling? How would how did that come about? If you don't mind sharing with me. Oh, not at all. No, it, it's it's actually a great story, and it happened almost to the day, 19 years ago, right before Memorial Day. Uh, I, I I was asymptomatic, and um, and, and Janet just hey, you know, we, we've got some kids. Gabby's about three. Uh, I mean, Vic, Gabby's about six. Vinny's two or three. And uh, she says, you know, you're of the age, you should get a colonoscopy. I couldn't even say it, let alone spell it, right? And we're, she's just messing around, you know, and she just say, you don't, get a you don't get a colonoscopy, I'm going to trade you in for a couple of 30-year-olds, right? And, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and Janet, um, <laughs> trust me, she could have done that very easily. So, uh, <laughs> she's, she's, she's still very attractive. And at any rate, um, you know, I, I, I did it. And, uh, and Janet can tell the story from there. And I, and I really did it reluctantly, but I, I did do it. I, I, I can't take the test. I can't take the test. I'm not going to go through it. It's one of the reasons. It's not a great way to spend a weekend, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I did what had to be done, and, and they found it. And I'm going to flip it over to Janet, and she can tell the real story. But, you know, the end result is they took 18 inches of my colon out on June 21st in 2001. And uh, it was done laparoscopically, and right after the surgery was over, and I was still uh, a little bit under the influence of some of those great painkillers they were giving me. Who's the first phone call I get? From Coach Ramil. What do you need? You want me to come there? I said, Tim, just bring some of your wine, Coach, and let's have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the kind of man that he is. Then that, that's where it goes beyond the coaching, and that's where, as Ken was saying. This is the fraternal side. This is the friendship side. This is the brotherhood that we have and has been created by Coach Ramil. But Janet, you can tell the rest of the story. Well, I, I, you know, it's not just cancer. It's any illness. I mean, Coach had a hip replacement. Ken's had adversity with health and his family. And it's really about making sure that you can follow up and you listen to your body. And then, um, all of us have to be your own advocate and you need your own support system because what happens is the doctors get immune. They don't even see you as a person. They, they, they hear so much heartache and agony that they learn to block it out, that they don't know that you're a person. You're just a number. And yes, they're looking at you in the eye and they're like, okay, and they're giving you lip service. But at the same time, you need to have your system and your advocates with you, and you need to make demands. Like when Vince was, what happened is Vince was, he was, he didn't have the colon symptoms, but he had health issues. He had pains. He started seeing things. And I go, get it, get it, get a physical. That's all you need to do. And then they found that there was blood. And he goes, I don't have that. That's and then you have to, so you deny. It's like Scarlett O'Hara. I'll deal with it tomorrow. Well, how do you know you got blood in your stool? I'm not looking at my stool all the time for crying out loud. You know, I mean, well, how, how would you know that? But, but, I, <laughs> but I say that because... <laughs> Don't fall off the chair, coach. <laughs> but, but what I mean is that then you go and you get your test. And when you're getting out of anesthesia, they go, we found something, but we don't know what it is. 
come back in six months. And I'm like, no, he's not coming back. He's already done the prep. He's going today to get it done. And they looked at me like I had six heads. And I ran around and I got his information. I got a script from the doctor and I ran over to the next test that needed to be done that was going to be done in six months because we did it that way. And he was embarrassed. You're embarrassing me. Oh, why are you doing this? And I go, too bad. And, he, and then I didn't like what the, the, the receptionist was saying. And I go, get me your boss. I want your boss. This isn't good. And, and then we run into who? Who did we run into? Why don't so, you go to work for Trump right now? <laughs> we ran into, uh, what was it? He just died. Um, the, the, um, we run into, and he had just had um, the next step, uh, uh, like a barium. And so he's there. And then, of course, everybody's like, oh, you're the football Philadelphia Eagles. So now he's really embarrassed because he just had, had a colonoscopy. He's drugged up. He hasn't eaten in a day, and he's miserable, and I'm embarrassing him. And then I'm getting a barium enema. Is anybody that's ever done one, <laughs> you know exactly, exactly. Hey, Vince, you know, let me, I'll interject. You're on a good topic. It makes me laugh because this is so true. I go in for my first colonoscopy, okay? I don't know how old I was, but probably mid-50s or earlier. But I go in, and just I remember this. I, I know what they're going to do, so I say to the nurse, you know, and doctor, if you find a boot up there as you're going, it's my dad's because all he ever told me he was going to put his boot up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I use that all the time when I'm speaking. When I, yeah. I, I said, yeah, they, they, yeah, I came clean, but they found that my dad's suit, but my yeah. dad's boot. <laughs> but I say all that because had he not gotten that second test and waited six months, he would have been in stage four cancer. So who cares if you're an embarrassment? You need to be your advocate, you need to push, and you need, and, and they just say, oh, well, you could come back. And half the time you go, I didn't like the first one, I'm not coming back for the next one. So you need your support system and you need your advocates and you need your angels to be able to say, this is what you're gonna do. You're, you need a coach to say, no, you, you take the personal out of it and you make it so that you get to the end line. And, and half of what goes on with medicine is waiting. And it's the waiting that kills you. If they could give you the test and you knew the answer right away, you'd know how to go on to it. But you have to wait for weeks in between. And that's what really creates more anxiety and more upsetment and disruption in your life. Good point. She's absolutely right. Because if I'd have waited a month, uh, I was told by the uh, by, by actually one of our advocates from Jefferson, ironically, Ken, and the guy by the name of Tony Infantilino, a gas gastroenterologist, and uh, he sent a specimen out, and they said it was totally encapsulated, um, the, the, the polyp they took out, but if it, we, we'd have waited a month, it would have broken through the colon wall, gotten into my liver, and then as they say, I'm an angel in the sky, you know, just saying hi, bye, bye. It was an aggressive so, cancer. Yeah, it was so. very aggressive. And, uh, you know, but hey, and she never lets me forget. She saved my life. Hey, no, coach. no. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, Coach, when you had your hip surgery, you thought it was going to be a walk in the park, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. You, you just never know. And and you're, you're blessed. We're blessed because you have advocates and, and you're somebody. But for the person that doesn't have that, um, that's what all of you are doing. You're being their voice and you're being their advocate and pushing them because you know the system. You Most know, people are ignorant to it. You know, speak, they don't understand. Speaking of being your own advocate, you know, it's kind of what we do at Braca Strong is be an advocate for the reasons of, you know, knowledge is power. All of us are familiar with breast cancer, colon cancer you know, testicular cancer, pancreatic cancer, but what is really going on in our world? You know, is there other avenues? Are we waiting? Are we not getting tested? Are we not going for our physicals? And that's what we want to do is make sure that we educate on all of your options to know what's out there. You know, I found out at the age of 21, I was BRCA positive. 
at the age of 18, I had my first lumpectomy, my second lumpectomy at 19. 21, they're like, we wanna do another one. Thank God I was in the medical field and knew who I knew, because if not, I would have just kept having lumpectomies. I'm like, no, there has to be other answers. What was it? Genetic testing. Some people are for it, some people are against it. I'm a true believer of be your own advocate and the more knowledge you have, the more power you have. And I decided at the age of 32, after having three lumpectomies, to go ahead and take preventative action against breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Had two healthy children before it. And now I'm a true believer of get out there, advocate, support, and educate, because we need this knowledge. Knowledge is power. You know, like you guys have a brotherhood through all of your friends, your coaches, you know, we've created a sisterhood and only on top of, you know, only women being involved, you know, men need to be educated on breast cancer. Men need to be educated on all other cancers. And, you know, that's here what we do at BRCA Strong. So we're super grateful that all of you came on. Let us share our story with you. You sharing your stories, which are very inspiring and empowering, especially during the time of COVID-19. We need as much inspiring stories as we can have out there. So, you know, Vince, I really appreciate you sharing your story and Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, you know, to all the coaches that came on, um, I love your speeches. I love your dedication. I love how you guys are all still so involved and inspiring and keep in touch. And if anybody has any comments or questions, you know, we'd love to share. Um, I know on Instagram, if you don't follow us, you can follow us on Instagram at Bracka Strong. We also have a website, which is www.brackastrong.org. And thank you, Cindy, again, for putting the call together and to all the coaches who are so dedicated. I know that NFL season's around the corner and I know I'm sure it has a huge impact um, on our players, on our games and what's gonna happen. Yep. Well, we don't know. You know, we'll, we'll find out. But, you know, it depends on the governors and what they – and Coach Coach probably knows. You probably be more than – I don't know anybody, more than anybody else. It, you know, I just – I think it's all up in the air. I really do. And they're like they're saying in Los Angeles and New York, there will not be any major sport events uh, until 2021. You know, and that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Gabrielle, with the with the NBA, they're, they're, the last NBA game of the season for the Sixers would have been a day before yesterday, or yesterday, and that would that was it. And it seems like it was last year, you know. And this this has all happened. It's just been it's amazing. But uh, you know, like as Ken knows, as you know, as everybody else knows, you got to stay strong and disciplined, gritty, to get through this, right? Right, Cuz? Can anyone recommend yes, a good breakfast wine? <laughs> well, I, I, I recommend the best wine I've ever tasted. Hey, how about you, Ken? Do, do, you know any good? Uh, you, you know any good wines out there? I'm in the Vermeil Wine Club. I I put my money where my mouth is. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't have what I call a breakfast wine. No, I'm just this. Uh, this hibernation period is tough, I tell you. My <laughs> Happy <laughs> hour keeps breathing <laughs> over. I'm not allowed to set it for the evening <laughs> meal, but I'm tempted to open it for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, this well, is with orange juice. Yeah. Yeah, mimosas. Mimosas uh, are great. You I guys, like everybody mimosas. take care. Have a good weekend. And thank you for the opportunity to join in. Yeah, yeah been a pleasure being with everybody. Thank you, care, care. you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe. Be invincible. Yeah. Be invincible for sure. Absolutely. Okay. That's it. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. Great job. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Diane, Jeff, everybody on. Appreciate it, coaches. Thank you so much. We appreciate Bye. it. And we appreciate you too. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having Thank you guys. We appreciate it. Bye. Bye -bye. Oh my God! Oh, Hi! Oh my God, Andrew, Vince, are you still on? Yeah, get back on. Oh my it. God! Here's a fan of yours. His name is Andrew. His name is Andrew. They're in New Jersey, actually. Where uh, is he? Andrew, you want to say a few words to Vince? Yeah. Say hi. First of all, it's an honor to meet you. Also, Tracy, Cindy, thank you guys for hosting this and inviting us. Mama DQ, of course, thank you too. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm wearing 83 right now. Yeah, but no, I'm, 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 uh, I'm sort of getting pretty uh, misty right here. Thank you very much. That's so cool. Look at this. Yeah, show Janet your jersey. She just was born oh, out. I, I rock this. I, uh, I wore 83 because of you in high school, and I have to follow your son very well. 
I know he went to University of Delaware, and oh, I know really? he was invited to the Eagles okay. camp, and I was, I was cheering for him too. And uh, I heard Teddy Bridgewater before, and I'm glad that he's out there still keeping the dream. It's easy to give yeah. up on things. To hear that he's yeah. still going and still going after it is wonderful. Yeah, so, well, yeah, we're, we're very excited about, about, about it. You know, but it's about so th this is so cool. Where in Jersey do you guys live? I'm sorry. Where, where in New Jersey? Are you? We're in Sayreville. Where's that? Oh, in, in mid, mid Central Jersey. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're, in Rutgers. Rutgers. We're, we're, we're we're in Cherry Hill. Yeah. They're up by Patterson, right? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess your internet. You got the you get Zoom. You guys bit. hear us? Yeah, I hear you now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see. I saw you. Yeah. Oh, so you yeah, have maybe the connection's good. All right, Janet's running. She's uh, she's on a call or doing something. Hi, right, they did a great job, Cindy. Thanks. Okay, thank you, thank you, Tracy, uh, so much. Are you still there, Tracy? Yeah, I'm still here. Hi. Thanks, <laughs> thank you so much for everything you do, not only for all these Zoom calls that we've had over the past week, a uh, couple of weeks, but uh, also for Brock is Strong. As you know, I'm ambassador, and I support everything you do, uh, right. and always will. Uh, your organization is amazing, and I, uh, it's a pleasure to witness firsthand all the people that you are inspiring, you're educating, and you're helping, because that is what Brock is Strong is all about. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to have you part of our team. Vince, make sure that you tell Janet to send me, or if you want to text me your friend's information. Sure. Vince, one of Janet's friends are going through chemo and stuff, so I told her I'd ship her a book, and we'll send her some care package. I'll put together a package and I'll mail it out to them if they get yeah, it. Yeah, she is, um, it's, she's dynamic. She's a brilliant, um, a brilliant uh, financier. And the, I was just on a podcast with her last week for you today. And just what, isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't this amazing? You know, this, I, I don't know if we're live right now, but you know, this is, this is totally trans. Uh, like today, Coach was saying he had some events canceled. I know Kenny Dunnick, uh, what he did with Jersey Man, and he has two magazines and he just does so much. And talk about networking and bringing business people together. We can't do them. And I was supposed to be in Irving, Texas today, where the where the Cowboys train, uh, speaking. And then I was going to go from there to Hawaii to speak sprint. And then I was going from there to the Kentucky Derby. And this was all going to be within a ten day period. And it just it came it came. To, but now all of a sudden, I'm getting requests to do uh, cyber presentations, virtual presentations. And, um, you know, and, and I did a podcast yesterday, Cindy uh, and, and Tracy, on reinvention and, uh, and, you know, how I'm reinventing myself. And I'm 